Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm showing you how to make something that has been requested over and over again for a very long time. So I'm excited to finally be sharing it with you. And no, it's not this teddy bear or even this lighthouse. In fact, it's the stands that they're sat on. One of the top questions I get is, how do I display layered projects if I don't have a frame to put them in? Well, you can make these gorgeous little paper craft stands. Two different types included and you can download them absolutely free using the link in the description of this video. This is the first type of stand which is nice and sturdy and it comes in two sizes. This long one and then one which is half the width for your smaller projects. Simply place your design on the little shelf at the front and it will stand up perfectly. If you prefer something that doesn't show so much at the front, there is also this stand. So if I take this out, you can see this is more like the traditional back of a photo frame and it sits there. It's got these little feet at the front. So you put it down and then line your design up in the feet and it sits against that back piece perfectly. Let's find out how to make them. You can download the free cutting file for this project at craftwithsarah.com forward slash free dash SVGs or follow the link in the description of this video to go straight to the download page. The download comes in a zip folder and you need to unzip this before you can upload the files into Cricut Design Space. Once you've downloaded and unzipped the folder, open up Cricut Design Space and start a new project. Go into Upload over on the left and then Upload Image. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of your folder and within there, go into the subfolder called SVG Files. This has the three different types of easel stand, which I've included as part of your free download. The first one is the one which goes together just by folding it down the middle, more like an artist's easel. And then the second and third ones are the more blocky style of easel. They're actually the same design, it's just the second one is double the width of the third one. So I'll show you how to do this for both easel 1 and easel 2. We'll start with easel 1, so i drag that into design space. It looks a little bit weird when you load it in, but that's fine, just click on upload. Then it will appear in your recent upload, so you can click on it and then go add to canvas. Now it will load in with black as the fill colour. And to change the colour, just click on that bottom layer in the layers panel and then you can change it to whatever you want. We need to format one of these layers into a score line. So I'm going to click on the layer, which just looks like a little line. You might not even be able to see it. And then under operation, change it to score. You know that's worked because when you click away, it looks like a dashed line. Finally, we need to tell the Cricut where we want it to score. So select both of those layers by dragging a box around it and then press attach. And that's all there is to do. It should load in at the correct size. You can resize it if you want to, depending on what type of project you're making. When you're happy with the size, press make it. And then here is what it looks like. You can change the paper size if you want to. Let's call that score line down the middle and this is ready to cut. This design works best when cut from really thick card, for example, craft board or holographic card or um, just anything that is really, really thick. If you use lightweight card, you'll probably find that it won't be strong enough to hold the weight of your design when you put it on the front. So that's design one. I'll show you how to make that a little bit later on. But now let's see how to load the other type of easel design. I'm going to go into upload again and then upload image. This time I'll select easel 2 and press upload. Click it in the recent uploads and then press add to canvas. Here it is and we have different layers this time. We have got more of them that we need to turn into score layers. So with my design all clicked, I'm going to go ungroup to separate out all the pieces. And in the layers panel, each of my red layers has a layer on top of it. And these are the ones we need to change to score. So I'm going to click it, go into score, and then do the same for the other two of these little layers. So not the ones that look red, the other ones. 
Once again, we need to attach, so select both of the layers down here, just these two rectangles, or you can do it by clicking one in the layers panel, press shift on your keyboard and then click the other one. So you want the one underneath and press attach. And then do the same thing for the other ones. And then this is ready to cut. Once again, this loads in at a suitable size, but you can change it if you want to. Just remember, if you change it, you need to change everything together. So the easiest way to do that is to press select all and group all of your layers. That way, when you change the size, everything changes in proportion. So you know that these side bits are still going to fit. I'll press make it just to show you what this looks like. And again, you can change the paper size. It will split it onto two sheets if you go to A4. It's got my score lines and my cut lines, and this would all be ready to cut out. These designs are a little bit stronger than the first one, so you don't have to use quite a heavy uh, weight of card. But again, you know, if you do use heavier card, it will be sturdier and stronger. So go ahead, get both of those designs cut out, and then I'll show you how to stick them together. And when I say stick together, I actually don't really mean that because neither of these easel cards actually requires any glue or adhesive. You just fold them together and they magically stay together without having to get your fingers sticky with that glue. We'll start with the first type of easel as this is the easiest one to put together. I've cut mine from red holographic craft board. It does mean it is a brown colour on the back, but that doesn't really matter because it's going to get covered up by whatever you put in it anyway. We've got our score line down the middle, so fold upwards to make a valley fold from that. So we're making the shape of a V, which is why it's called a valley fold. See, there's our V. I'm being quite gentle with my folding because it is thick card. It should line up perfectly and be symmetrical on both sides. And that does stand like that and you could just put your design in it as it is, but to add a bit of extra stability, there is this piece. This simply goes into the little slots on either side. So I'm going to tuck it in there. That's one side. And on the other side, oh, I'm never good at fiddly little things like this. It just tucks in. There we go. So you're sort of sliding the tabs inwards like that one. And then the same on the other side. one and come on <laughs> it's definitely a knack to this that I don't have two <laughs> once they've both slid in you'll have the piece there which sits straight flat and it just keeps this exactly where we want so it's not going to accidentally close up and it gives that extra stability in the middle just so it sits a little bit firmer and you can put your design on the front. Here's the other style of easel and I'll show you how to do it with the thinner version but it works exactly the same for the thick ones too. We'll start with the big piece and position it so that the bit with the, th the dashed lines is at the bottom. First, we're going to mountain fold down the first score line. So fold it downwards so that we're making the shape of a mountain in that fold. The other three folds are all valley folds, which is the opposite way. So we're going to bend that point downwards instead. And we're making a V like a valley. And do that for all of those three folds there and then next I'll do the sides so fold in the little triangles and then get one of your side pieces these have score lines along them too and I'm going to turn that upside down and fold in along those score lines. It is quite tricky to get these folds. There we 
is one. And then two. Then we can start putting it together. So how this works is that these triangles will go through the holes so that they're hidden from view. So it'll be really nice and neat without the need for any glue. Start with that top one. You wanna make sure both of the ends of the triangles go through the hole, because that's what holds it in place. It's a little bit fiddly. <laughs> you want in, there we go. those edges in. There's definitely a knack to doing things like this and I don't have it. <laughs> and it's done. When it's done fold it inwards so it's not going to pop out again when you're doing the other ones. That one's all through, excellent. And now I can do the other side. So first one in there and the second one, two, and just wiggle them in, wiggle, wiggle to get the corners in. When it's done, it will look like this. There's a little gap at the top. And if we look on the inside, I'm not sure you can quite see because of the shadowing, but there's my little tabs holding it secure on the inside. And then you would do the same on the other side. I've got one that I've already made. <laughs> so here we go. I've got one side on, two sides on. And now all we need to do is make the little step at the front. So just fold upwards to make a triangle and then stick the little tabs through the holes. Oh, I am all fingers and thumbs today. I can't do anything. I've been trying to craft most of the day and just failing at everything. I don't know what's wrong with me. One, two, go in, three. Oh no, my one's come out again. <laughs> Okay, once they're through, fold them back on themselves so that they stay in there. And you can put a little bit of tape down there to make it extra secure. Um, but it does stay pretty well by itself. And there we go, my attempt to make an easel stand. And then your layered design would just sit in the front it's got all of this to keep it in position and the little bit at the front as well to make sure it's not going anywhere. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make two different types of easel stand for your laid paper craft projects. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut paper craft projects. Thank you for watching. Bye.